is always, always the awkward part. This is always the awkward part. When you gotta wait on, on everybody to join. And when that happens, you gotta stare at the screen and look all weird. Cause you know, you gotta wait on people to join so you ain't talking to yourself. Hey everybody. I'm gonna do what people do on these lives and be like, I'm gonna wait for everybody to come in. I'm gonna wait for everybody to come in. Ain't that what people do? I'm gonna wait. Interesting topic today, no? It's uh, it's been on everybody's mind. It seems. Let me look at my face. So I ain't finna be out here looking crazy. All right. I'm gonna get straight into it. Oh, we got all the saints. Hey, y'all coming up in here. They saw Beyonce and said, okay, well, I'm ready to tussle. <laughs> anyway, so if y'all know me even a little bit, you know that I don't be jumping on hot topics like that because I just don't. I'm, I'm, I'm uninterested in having a public opinion about everything right so i'll have these conversations with preston and with friends but platforming every conversation or every controversy is just that gets old because one of my primary goals with this platform is really to always stick to the fundamentals right what's the fundamentals read your bible pray love god don't worship idols the, the fundamental stuff, all right? And when you know the fundamentals, then you have the ability to speak into and discern all the things about everything else. Anyway, this is a little different <laughs> because I've been thinking through, researching, praying about the whole Beyonce thing for a couple of months now. And I was having private conversations with people around it because I didn't, again, I didn't want to talk out loud about stuff. Um, and probably yesterday I started to feel like this burden that maybe I need to talk about this now. And so I, I, me and Preston pray last night. I was like, because I want, I, I don't want to do it if the Lord isn't leading me to do it because I want his wisdom. I want his blessing. Um, and I think he is. I think I think it, it feels like a, an Acts where Paul, when he went into Athens and it, it said that his spirit was provoked within him um, because of all the idols. And that's what I feel. I feel provoked. I, I feel provoked. A holy provocation. So let's let's begin. Are you ready? Say, I got my Bible and everything. Like I, I ain't finna just be giving you a bunch of like worldly uh, earthly wisdom. All right. Here we go. So <laughs> what happened? So maybe context, context, this is context. I was a self-proclaimed Beyonce fan, secretly. Like everybody that knew me knew I was a stan. Why? When I was eight, the first CD my mom brought me, the first two CDs she brought me was Brandy's Never Say Never and uh uh destiny's child this the album with the album that was white where they was doing no 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 it had the remix on it no 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 and then be saying yeah that one okay so i've been team bay since i was eight i'm 33 now okay that's that's a long time um and so i i didn't see you know i didn't seen all the shifts and all the things but i'm like but her, her, the thing I valued, past tense, up, uh, and I guess present tense, and some. The thing I valued about Beyonce was her creativity, her her work ethic, her uh, her courage in some senses. Like even the fact that she was one of the first people to drop an album without promo. People wasn't doing it at first. Like when she just randomly dropped an album, I was like, who has the courage? to do that right and so i was out here loving on bay all right <laughs> i had to put that out there so probably a couple months ago a solid two months ago i was in the i was getting my hair done 
And that week, I kept entering into conversations with people where they were talking about how they had to throw away, throw away, or get rid of some kind of object object that had evil intentions or origins, right? And you know when you have conversations with people and stuff keep coming up, so it feel like oh. The Lord, you must, you must want me to do the same thing. So I was like, okay. So I sat in my, uh, I was getting my hair done and I sat in the chair and I was like, okay, God, if there's anything you want me to get rid of that has evil origins, let me know. I'm thinking the Lord finna say, oh, them shoes <laughs> or that shirt or that book in the back of your closet that you didn't realize you had. Literally what entered my mind was Beyonce. I said, wait, wait. I'm like, I'm like, that's just my subconscious. Like, that's not, that's not the Lord saying <laughs> that I got to get rid of Beyonce, right? Because I just refused. I refused to believe that Jesus didn't want me to still like be team back. So when that happened, one of the lyrics to uh, Black Parade kept entering my mind, right? And it was the lyric where she says, some, 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 some ocean energy. And that kept going in my mind. And I felt like the Lord was like, just study. Just research. Just just read. Like, you ain't even got to be all that deep. Just, just read. And so I was like, okay, who is ocean? <laughs> I went down the biggest deep dive for some days on Yoruba spirituality on ocean or orishas on all the things and i realized after doing some research since lemonade that's usually that's where the shift was since lemonade she has centered centered false deities and embodied them right so in in lemonade when um she comes out uh, with the yellow dress on and the water and all the things like she she becomes or tries to embody these false gods and the worship of ancestors right and so I was just like I really felt some type of way one I felt some type of way because I was just like but I like the music <laughs> I like the music but I also felt some type of way because I didn't realize how blind I was because I liked the music so much that I didn't have discernment. The music made witchcraft beautiful. And that's the problem. And um, I, was, I was looking up also Black is King. And Black is King, when it came out, I thought that thing was so like aesthetically fire. Like I was just like, oh, like all the little scenes and all the stuff, right? And I remember um, cats that I know that are African or people on, in, on Instagram that are African, all of them was like, oh, this is the body. This is witchcraft. This is this. And I was mad at them because I was like, why y'all got to be so deep? Like, why y'all can't just, like, why can't, why y'all can't just enjoy the art? Because I'm a creative, right? And so I value creativity. I'm like, why y'all can't just, but what was happening was they had the eyes to see and the ears to hear and because i like the art and the music so much i actually rejected their wisdom and now i see they they knew what they were talking about because with black is king for example like every scene bro every scene is her centering some kind of deity it's multiple even to the point that there's this scene where she's dressed like a uh, like a cow, and she has this uh, circle on top of her head, right? And what she's embodying, because it ain't even like speculation, it's like facts, right? So in that scene, she's dressed like a bull named Apis, A-P-I-S. I know Apis because I taught a text at Glory two years ago on Exodus 33 about the golden calf. I asked the question when I was researching that text, why did the Israelites make a cow to worship? Why didn't they make any other animal? And it's because they just came out of Egypt. One of the preeminent deities in Egypt was Apis. But now we have Beyonce becoming 
a false God in black is king, embodying the golden calf that God judged Israel for. I felt away. I felt like, wow, why, why didn't I see this? I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to see it. So at the end of the night, after I did all my research, I deleted every Beyonce album off my phone. And I'm not even going to lie to you. I lamented that. There was grief because I told Preston, Beyonce is such a a big part of my life. And not my life like I was listening to her every day, but when I think about moments, like I remember being eight, right? At Christmas and receiving her CD. I remember being with my friends when an album would drop and us listening to it and sharing over it. I remember going to concerts with friends and enjoying the concert, right? So there's these, there's these moments in my life that Beyonce is a part of. And so to cut it off or to, to, to remove it felt like, wow, like this is, this is sad, but I have to be willing to trust that protecting my heart from evil is a good thing, right? Like I, I, I have to be willing to, to believe that there are spiritual realities at play that as a wise Christian, I should not be opening myself up to. So here's this conversation now. Um, to me, the issue is, is less about Beyonce and more about the necessity of wisdom. I, I think we have a wisdom problem. Wisdom being the application of knowledge. And I think a function of wisdom is discernment. Discernment is the ability to notice and identify goodness and to respond in such a way where the discernment is shown to be uh, good and right and true, right? And so we have this concert coming and we have a lot of people really excited about it, really promoting it. And I have friends, right, who um, kind of have a connection to Beyonce and we have different calls because their call is to influence the influential. My call is to influence the influenced. And so I, so that's why I'm talking to, to y'all, the people who are influenced by the influential. Um, yeah, so I think a text that's helpful in framing this conversation is 1 Corinthians... Uh, is it 10? Yeah, it's 10. Not it. Yeah, it is. So, one reason I was hesitant to even have this conversation is because I think I've been really cynical towards people who are like discernment bloggers who like always have something to say about everything in the world. You know, like, uh, like it just gets on my nerves. Like, just teach the Bible. Like, train people how to read the text train people how to love jesus like like i i think it can get it can it can actually how do i say it when you follow people who only call out and convict and critique they actually don't train you to have discernment on your own because they're not giving you the tools to develop your own wisdom and your own kind of um uh, these own your like they don't give you the tools to know how to determine goodness without them, and so that's why you got to keep listening to them. You got to keep subscribing to them. You got to keep watching their YouTube because they never gave you tools. They just tell you to cut this person off. And I I am not the kind of person who is going to get mad at you for being hungry when I haven't even taught you how to fish. And so that's what this moment is, is that to me, what matters most is not just saying, maybe you shouldn't do that. It's this is why and moving forward, these are the ways that you can apply this wisdom in uh, different contexts. So, for example, I think when it comes to something like Beyonce, right, uh, that's like a really big, obvious thing to me. But I think if we lack wisdom, 
when it comes to participating in the big things that represent a cult and witchcraft, then there is the potential that we are also lacking wisdom in the minor things, such as, should I go out with this person? Should I be this person's friend? Should I pursue this job? Should I read this book, right? And so I, I think wisdom in the big stuff, can trickle down into wisdom in the day-to-day -day life stuff, right? Okay, so I say all that to say, 1 Corinthians 10, I think is a really helpful uh, frame for this conversation. Paul writes to uh, Corinth, and between chapters 8 and 10, he's dealing with the subject of meat sacrificed to idols, right? And he starts this way, which I think is interesting. He says, for I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, so don't be ignorant, have knowledge that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food. But nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased. That is really helpful in this conversation because it says these are the people who are a part of a covenant community. These are the people that were delivered. These are the people that, that were fed by God, but these are also the people that God was not happy with. And so what is at stake in a conversation is we cannot be arrogant in thinking that just because we are Christians, that God will not be displeased if we participate in certain things, right? Okay, now in verse... Fourteen, He says, therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to sensible, wise people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Listen to this. The cup of blessing that we bless is not a participation in the blood of Christ. The bread that we break is not a participation in the body of Christ. Then he says, 19, what do I imply then? Follow me. That food offered to idols is anything? Or that an idol is anything? No, I imply that what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons. What's the point? The point is, you got uh, in Corinth, they got all these temples, right? And people are sacrificing food to demons, or food to their idols, right? Sometimes, you know, when you go get your nail done, you see the little altar with the little Buddha with a little orange. It's like somebody could have ate that orange, but I guess you think Buddha gonna eat it before you go to bed. And so they would give the idols food, right? Now, at these idol temples, they also had like these, uh, how do you say it? Like, you know how like uh, at, at old black churches, they got a fellowship hall where you can go eat chicken? That's basically what, <laughs> what these temples had, is that they had fellowship halls where the food that was sacrificed would also be useful for feeding each other. So they would fellowship over the food that was sacrificed to the idols. And so some of the people in Corinth obviously would naturally, you hungry, I'ma go get a sandwich, right? You done sacrificed the pork, but you kept the leg. Let me get one of them legs, right? And so because it's just food, it doesn't seem that deep, follow? So because they are only going to eat food, they not going to sacrifice. They not going to worship the idols. They not going to participate. For them, it's just food. In the same way, there are some artists where it's just, it's just music. I'm not doing what she's saying. I'm not worshiping Orishas. I'm not calling out to different deities. I'm not talking about Oshun. I just like the music. It, it's just, it's just music, right? But then he says, what the pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. Listen, I do not want you Christians to be participants with demons. They're going to the altar or they're going to the temple to simply eat food. The food is being sacrificed to idols. The Christians recognize that idols are not real gods and therefore they assume that there is no spiritual consequence to eating the food. Paul has to warn them in saying, ah, 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 you know something, but you're ignorant to another thing, which is that 
even if they are sacrificing the food to an idol that it is, is not a real God, there is a spiritual dimension behind the idol that is demonic. And so by virtue of you taking part in the food that was sacrificed, you are also fellowshipping with the demon the food was sacrificed to. And I think that that is potentially the principle that needs to be applied to our participation with certain music, concerts, uh whatever is that even if we have the insight to know that it's just music it's just food the spiritual reality at play inclines us to be wise and saying but i cannot fellowship with demons i cannot do it here's the heavier part he says verse 21 this is first corinthians 10 by the way you cannot drink the cup of the Lord, he's talking about uh, communion, the Lord's Supper, and the cup of demons. Meaning that when when you take part in communion, there is a there's a there's a fellowship with Christ and an association with Christ's body because of the fellowship of the Lord's Supper. And he then draws that out into them eating meat sacrificed to idols, which is in the same way, taking part in the Lord's Supper is fellowship with Christ and identification with Christ's body. Then also in the same way, when you eat meat sacrificed to idols, there is fellowship with demons and identif identification with the idolaters that are doing the work. And so what is at stake then is a matter of witness and a matter of fellowship because there are people who may see your partnership with certain artists and, I, and by partnership i simply mean just being in the temple being in the concert that it does something to their conscience where now they don't have the same tools and the same wisdom and the same knowledge you have but because you're there they can then assume that they're in the right place too, right? So, so it's a matter of witness, but it's also a matter of fellowship. I don't know, I can't speak to the implications of what fellowship with demons is because the text doesn't say it, right? Because there are times when we can listen to certain music or watch certain things or go to certain places and there is no discernible negative effect right so let's say you know i used to listen to three six mafia all the time all the time right i never felt like i got possessed i didn't i didn't have no demon manifest in my room yeah so i could assume that because I can't discern the neg negative effects, that that means that there aren't any. Um, so that's why I feel like faith and trust has to be a part of this because we can't judge the goodness of a thing on the basis of if we, how do I say this again? Okay, let me back up. Genesis 3, Eve, there's a tree. She says the tree looks good for food. It, uh... Uh, is a delight to the eyes and if I eat it I'm gonna be wise she judged the goodness of the tree by its effect it looks good it's gonna taste good therefore it is good that's bad judgment and that's bad wisdom we do not judge goodness that way how do we judge goodness? By what God has said in his word. Goodness is revealed in Christ himself. So if it aligns with the nature of God, therefore then it is good. So for example, when she looked at the tree, what would, what would, what would wisdom have looked like? Look like? The tree, would have, she would have said, it looked good for food. It, I mean, it's, it's a delight to the eyes. But God said, the day you eat of the tree is going to surely die. So it don't matter what it look like. It, it don't matter what I think it's going to do. What has God said? I saw in my comments the other day, uh, yesterday, 
this lady was like that she went to uh, a Guns N' Roses concert and she had the time of her life and nothing negative happened. And it's like, wonderful. Maybe God protected you. Awesome. But maybe something negative did happen and you're just unaware of it. Maybe, maybe it is that deep, right? Like maybe it is that deep and we're just shallow because when, when you're in a pool and shallow end, the deep end looks the same. It don't look deep. It, it looked like the shallow end and the deep end have the same depth until you move towards it. And when you move towards the deep end, then you realize, oh, it is that deep. I just was on the wrong side, so I didn't notice it, right? And so I think that is why there is a necessity for wisdom. And again, for the new people, I'm getting gassed up now. Again, this is bigger than Beyonce. She's a case study for our lack of wisdom. That's what matters, right? Because when, when, when she's gone, there will always be opportunities for us to make bad decisions and what we watch, what we digest, what we entertain, right? And so what we need is wisdom. Wisdom cries out. Um, so yeah, that's all I got. Now, I'll say, <laughs> I'll say this. Uh, if you like Beyonce... If you bought her tickets, if you plan to go, I am not shaming you. My job here in my heart is to instruct you and to give you a framework by which you can make a wise decision. Uh, a year ago, if I watched my own life, I would have watched it and been like, you know what? She made some good points, but I'm going to that concert. <laughs> I promise. I was like, that, those are some, those some great points, but I'm sorry. Like, I, I got to I gotta go. And that's, that's why I, I, I want to put the burden on you to do this. Pray. Ask God what he would want you to do. Because at the end of 1 Corinthians 10... What Paul ends up saying is, you know what? Whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. That right there is what we don't do. We don't seek God about if this thing will bring him glory. And so that's what I encourage you. Pray. Ask God. Talk to wise people and say, Lord, do you want me to go? Do you want me to go here? Do you want me to be in relationship with this person? Do you want me to read this book? Do you want me to see this movie? Do, do you want me to continue this friendship? Do you want me to have this job? You know what I'm saying? Like we, we, we have to be that dependent because God is worthy, right? Like he is Lord, he is King. And therefore he deserves all glory, all honor, all praise be to him. And here's the beautiful thing, y'all. Even though there is a cost to consecration, there's a cost. There is so much joy. There's, there's, a, there's a freedom and there's a wisdom. And there's even this, uh, even lately, like my mind is clearer. I, I'm able to discern things in, in, in ways that I wasn't before when my mind was foggy with just worldliness. And so that's the good news is that when God prompts you to cut a thing off, it isn't to leave you empty, but to fill you. It's is that he, he has to get things out of the way so that you could be filled with the spirit more and more. And so that's my encouragement. Um, I, I, I feel like she might be on here. I want to share my friend's dream. Um, dreams are not infallible or inerrant right? And so the, the final authority on all truth is scripture. And so even in sharing this dream, it's not that I want you to hear it and let the dream influence you more than it should. I'm just sharing it because I think it's deep. So <laughs> my friend, she's a dreamer. I'm a dreamer too. I haven't had a dream about uh, Beyonce. Look at the devil trying to mess with my Wi-Fi. Um, I did have a dream the other day that uh, 
a demon put his hand on my arm. I was driving. It's this super random. I was driving in the car and the lights went out in my car and then the demon came and put it on my arm. And in the dream, I was just like, oh, man, now I got to deal with these cats. <laughs> but I, I do think it's symbolic of the Lord. I don't know if y'all noticed. I feel like he is pushing me more towards uh, just being more upfront and about about confronting the, the demonic and witchcraft anyway her dream listen 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 all right now i'm gonna get off because i gotta go write a sermon so she said that she was at beyonce's concert and in the dream beyonce was on stage and she was dancing and singing and doing all the things and she was actually able to see this is a dream, right? So I'm not saying that this is real, but she was able to see the um, the demon at work within Beyonce. And she said he was the biggest demon she's ever seen in her life. And I was like, what you mean, my big? Like, he looked like a, he looked like a, a like a giant. Like, he was like Shaq. <laughs> like, what you mean? And she said, um, no, he was bigger than anything you would ever see on earth she was like but the scary thing was is that the demon's face was nurturing it looked loving it looked caring it looked like it was happy to be and serve the people and while the demon is on stage dancing and singing the people the audience is being crushed under an invisible weight but they were so infatuated and seduced by the demon that they didn't notice that they were dying and whether that dream is true or not i do think it speaks to we have to be aware of the devil's schemes and we have to be discerning on what we open ourselves up to um, especially in the West, I, th I think we would do well to spend more time with our African brothers and sisters because they, and Haitians and Jamaicans, they be sensitive to stuff in ways that we aren't. I think we're, we're way too cynical. And the way the occult and witchcraft and new age is kind of um, not even seeping, but snatching up people by the day, we 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 gotta we gotta be careful. So that's all I got. Pray, seek God, love Jesus, read the Bible, test everything that I said. You know, keep what's good, throw away what's what's worthless, and uh, God is faithful. Have a great day.